Okay, go ahead and get back to the board. Uh, I'm going to open up questions and comments and stuff. What we've seen so far. Unica. There you are. Anything else that you wanted to summarize and stuff with? No, just that I think you know, a lot of good information. Normally, the uh, firms like uh, Catalyst do provide that real level of detail that you need to go after certain markets. Just a, first of all, I'd like to say, once the council and Eric and I were talking about this with Romno, it's just a matter of time. It, it, this is not one of those things that's just going to happen overnight. It takes time. It takes a lot of putting effort, money, and marketing into it. And going after it. And, uh, I just I think we've been doing a lot of it. I think we need to continue doing that and maybe continue doing it with a little more force. <laughs> which comes into uh, having having people like Catalyst uh, to assist us maybe in doing some of the work and then also uh, looking to the, the ISM packages as well. How, how does that, you said the listing Catalyst, the uh, couples with some of the company do that? What is that? Well, we haven't really discussed because they're truly there and I truly appreciate what we've told this morning. This is, you know, they're doing us a favor in terms of just spending their time with us, more in terms of education. I wanted them to, to come in and give us, give us an education, basically, from, from their uh, perspective and from their uh, expert opinion. Because truly, they are out there in the market every day, which we're not. So they bring a different level of ingredients to, the, to this, to the marketing and economic development. We just simply don't have the resources. So uh, we haven't talked in details, but that's something that we can look at their structures with some of the other cities, see what they are doing, and we'll take a look at that and come back to you. Uh, Council, got any more, any other questions or anything? Uh, I was going to ask Claude, so what, what would we need to do to do something with, with some group out there? What's the next process? Well, it's a matter of some focus, I suppose, by the council. You heard how in the Louisville market you can drill down on these places to the extent of extremely small sub-market, Old Town, West 535, Main try to tackle all of those at once or focus on one of those areas or two of those areas, I think has to be a question that's answered initially in your minds. Uh, where do you want to spend uh, your resources? You have limited resources. It's going to be resource intensive to some extent uh, to do some of the things that uh, you might have to do. Uh, even if it's just straight up infrastructure for example, holding and prioritize to some extent to find out where you want to make those. That's where you want to focus your resources and your effort, staff effort, any consultant effort if you have consultants, and then uh, go from there on what kind of ideas those folks have. Uh, where you what, what, I was, what I was mainly getting at is right before we, but we need a third party to come in and look at what we have from, from another perspective. Uh, so, we just go out for request on it, or different groups, or professional services you come out? An RFP, you could just uh, invite several firms to talk to do that type of work. You could invite one firm, there's the professional consultants, so you do whatever you want. And, and I think that uh, that's kind of a, kind of a thing there, that uh, what they're talking about is creating a sense of place, or they're, they're talking about utilizing place as a competitive disadvantage. So the question is, where can you do that and what does it take to do that? And what the outside party is going to do for you that you can't probably do yourself is exactly what John mentioned. He's going to tell you how it is. He's not going to tell you what you want, what you want or what you think you can get. He's going to tell you how it is. Sure. And, you, and you can focus in from there. You spend a lot of time and effort spinning the wheels trying to say, well, we need a Chico's on the corner of Garden Ridge at Main Street, but I think probably the end of the corner of 
I think that's why we need a third party, be it this group or some other, that, that will tell us that. Because we all have ideas, but it, uh, they're not always the, the best thing that people really want to do. Let me get a good question for you. Is, um, I mean, I'm looking at what Catalyst does, but and, and I'm playing off of this and I have the same thoughts. Is there is there a study before the study? Is there a way to find out what areas uh, have the best potential for yes, development, that's, redevelopment? That's where I was focus. going. Actually, when we do the announcements plan, the vision 2025 plan, as part of it, we are focusing on retail. And actually, as part of that group that are going to come in, they need to have somebody of their expertise as part of that group. So that could be a study before the study. That could happen as part of that project, and then we would forward that. And some of that may be intuitive from your standpoint, whether it's conforming to reality or not, is no question. But for example, the Main Street West corridor seems to be an area that has experienced a lot of change over the last 15 to 20 years. This is where you get a lot of complaints about uh, the thrift store, numbers of thrift stores, the number of cash flow in places, the number of what's considered the lower end of the uh, retail the market. Of work. And that might be one of those areas that you tend to want to focus those resources on in the future. And the old town's another. Um, that's kind of short term, but looking out in the future, I can see the 3040 corridor having some similar issues. So, like whack a hole. 121's changing right now. 121, exactly. Yeah, cigarette stores and, uh, you know, so you, you, got, you have a, we're kind of unique in, you know, in a way because we have a lot of retail areas in comparison to even somebody like Roman, Roman's relative. Um, we have five, six segmented different areas that you could hone in on that are all changing as Ian Johnson is constantly churning, constantly changing, and the marketplace is constantly changing. So and how you attack what is really the question that you have to answer. Whether you can do that with the health consultants or do something intuitively that guide them uh, is the question that you have to answer. There's, there's got to be some way to figure out what's at the top of the opportunity list. Right. Right. Well, and to that, I'm sitting here thinking, listen to your presentation that was talked to Grace about me. But I heard a couple of things you mentioned. One was one of the first things you looked at was population. And then you said, and for certain things, daytime population, not necessarily residential, but daytime population. Sure. And then I heard too about your deal about cities uh, having no particular want for something and they go and put all their their uh, eggs in one basket to get something and that's not going to work for them and they waste all that it's a futile effort and they waste all that time here getting money on something that's not going to work for them in the long run. My question here I guess is from hearing this we talked about one other place you talked about that was ended up, it, they brought in, I've got I mean, all these jobs, and there wasn't places for people to eat and stuff for the daytime population. My thought is something that might not cost us that much, but something that looks to me like it's right for us to be doing as well, but is on the southern end down there by 121 in the conversion center. All of those buildings are packed. We don't have one vacancy down there. It's all solid. Myers Crosby can talk about building more buildings now. The last three years, that has just filled up tremendously. You're talking probably 6,000 employees down there or more daily that would that need places to go for, during, and after work before they venture out of things. Right there. Well, but that's why those restaurants, um, that's why we have concentrated restaurants right there in those locations. Close to the mall at the southern end, and that's why they're actually doing very well. Right. Because right. of all that daytime population. Probably, uh, you know, we, we talk about the, the distance you know, between where, where they want. So they, you know, if one goes over here, then there is a, they have a certain distance limit, and another one can go somewhere else. But I just got a call from Payway. You know, they're across the street in the Target Center. They want to be on the other side of the street as well. To that's capture correct. that. And, and we just had the wild turkey movie. That's the only right. place I got outside so, of Dallas. So I think like, that. You know, and that comes to, uh, to when, when I got the call from Payway that they are a PFJ company, 
And I thought, oh great, finally, you know, because we've been going after the attack, then <laughs> then it come in. But I think beyond that, then we know the market is there. It's just to beyond that, it's going after again, not the ingredients, the the top kind of end of the market that, that we want. So so that all fits into this, you know, this overall program, and we need to tackle it from different levels. The next presentation yeah. that we have for you goes a little more into detail That's about it. It's just not one thing that we need to do. It's just a you know, complete program. That In that area, you would almost be focusing on uh, capitalizing on existing strengths as one of the stronger areas, right. as opposed to, for example, Main Street, which would be addressing the weaknesses. And I guess that's it's a different. Was, it's a different approach. Yeah. I guess that's why I was thinking. With the growth we've had in that area, we, as far as infrastructure, don't really need to do much of anything. But what it behoove us to enlist somebody to help us recruit certain businesses in that area, right there, because we don't need to do any infrastructure. Well, I would argue that with 35, if that's quite the bottleneck around that time, and, and by improving the, the flow there in that area, we might we might actually get more retail. That's up. You know, but it, it kind of raises the question you get that uh, he was talking about convergence and how it's occupied the number of employees there. And then I look at the top of the thumb on the corner of the valley in 3040, and lease turnover there is fairly high. There's uh, always unoccupied space. And, and I wonder why. But they don't have that direction. And I think the, the nature of that type of a shopping center versus different type of shopping center. Mm -hmm. But they're driving further. To go to where they want to go. Yeah. <laughs> Nika, you said uh, Payway wants to open another one. I thought they just wanted a more prominent location. No, they want to go to another one. Another two. Yeah, a larger. Yeah, basically. Another bar. Cubby hole over there. Actually, we're going to be. It's a new, new concept for us. Awesome. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, it's the exact same thing as this side of 35. That's con. Said, yeah. I mean, not con. Uh, the chicken. Canes. Yeah, Canes. Right. Same thing Canes did. Canes is over close to Payway. That's right. Across the street. Now they want to move. And then they want to move on this side. Yeah, same thing. They want to move on this side. Oh, so it's just not, not directly. <laughs> you're not talking directly across the highway from where I'm not. You're talking like come to this part of town here. No, directly across uh, 3040. Yeah. Right. Somewhere a little bit further. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they were just going to move. Uh, I go there a lot. I, I, I'm like a regular. That's what we do. In a nutshell, this is what we do, guys. <laughs> we go to a certain areas of town, a town, a shop, or whatever. We will do our sampling, which will, we've already talked about it, we'd collect several, several thousand samples. And then we would kick out the outliers, and then we would take 65% of what's left. That's your trade area. And that'll be your trade area during the daytime, during all times. That's key. I mean, that is a huge thing. Then you overlay your demographic information. Then you overlay, which is not as important, your psychographic. Not as important, but it's there. That tells you, the demographic of the trader, who you really are. Who, who is this? And then that's where you match up with all the criteria of all the restaurants and all the software, all the retailers, 9,000. We just crunch it down. And that goes back to the, I said earlier, one of our clients wanted a central market. You're not going to get a central market. But you, you can get a Sprouts. Good brand. So, got a Sprouts. Because Sprouts was interested because we said, look, here's the trade area. This is how we got it. They go, okay, they understood that. We discounted it. This is it. And they went, wow, that helps us out. We wouldn't have thought of that, of that location kind of thing. And so we are going after because when we crunch it down, we come up with several hundred retailers, big, small sit-downs of who should be interested there. And then that's how it works. We go out and make contact with the retailers, and sh we push all this out to everybody, and that's key. And because I used to get calls all the time from cities, and a retailer does not believe anything a city tells them. They just don't. A retailer won't believe anything that a broker unsolicited tells them. They just won't. And also, just to let you know, reality as well. When I first started in, in the industry 25 plus years ago, I was on a staff of 21 people doing a build out. Retailers don't have hardly anybody in their real estate departments anymore. 
And so my last, I'd opened 50 plus stores a year. I had seven on my staff, seven for the entire country. And so that's reality is when I get phone calls from the outside saying, come in here, I go, you know, I, I can't absorb it. I just can't, even if it's the best site in the world, I can't absorb it. But when we call up and say, this is what's going on here, take a look at it, we go, they understand it because I'm only contacting them because it makes sense. I'm not wasting their time. It, every industry has their own language and processes. That's what we are. And governments don't recognize that. Sorry, go ahead. The other thing, and I think the mayor uh, touched on that, is we do have that concentrated employment down in the south. We also want that employment to come 10 minutes up north right. and come to Old Town instead mm -hmm. of just eating there. We right. want them to go on the other side of Maine. And so that's another thing we need to focus on. How do we get that 6,000 people to just drive to Old Town? Which is, again, creating that sense of place and creating that destination that they would want to go. They'd want to come out and sit outside on the patio with a nice place. And that's nice a big deal. Time. And that's true, because if you look at the uh, people, the demographics of all around, why does Roanoke work so much? Well, because people in Capel, Capel has no downtown. So they go, you know, it's, it's, a, it's entertainment. It's entertainment for them. Okay. And, and it's a different, different area or a different place it, yeah. than the 121 corridor. Completely. Different and you have to treat it differently. And you have to treat it completely differently. And when you talk about Capel. Yeah, which is, that's what it's always been. I think we need to go ahead and do something. Because when 35 gets under construction in the next... Ten years. <laughs> Six years. Yeah. Six years. Yeah. Six years. That's funny. We're gonna, a bunch of the restaurants are going to be gone. The ones that exist now. Uh, some will come back. Some will just say, thanks, we made money on this real estate deal. We're going to go on. Uh, but we're going to have to do something. Darren... The construction time, and it's already starting now with the purchases that they are making. Uh, it's going to be terrible traffic wise. So just get ready for that. We need dummy. Yeah. No, it's not bad now. It's going to be terrible. Compared to what we doing. Yeah. But, but we need to go ahead. If we're going to do something, we need to go ahead and do it. We can't sit around a table and say, well, we wish we had A and then fill in the blank. Yeah. We need to have somebody tell us that's not going to work there. We need to do this. Here's what you got to spend in this area if you're going to do something. Uh, you don't need to spend any more down here. We just need maybe some marketing or something. Over here, we need to expand the water and sewer and build new roads. So that's what we need to have. May and it's going to cost money. Right. That's it. It's going to cost. May are we at the point where we can ask for outside consultants to come in and we point them into the area that we want or we think we, they should be studying? Uh, you know, like a request for proposals or something? Well, I think we'd, we'd want to do both, actually. I think we'd want to give them, I, I don't know, I, I refer, refer, refer this to staff a little bit more, too, but I would think we would want to do both, actually. We would want to give them some areas that we think well, need yeah. to be improved, but we'd also want them to give their input is, is that where you get your best bang for your buck? That's right. Where maybe, like me, saying us develop that down there by that high employment area, and then Nika says, yeah, but we need to also bring them up in the Oakdale. I hadn't thought about that. So we need their input also to say, yeah, I understand you need to do this. But if you really want to get the best bang for your buck, you might want to look at doing this also. So I, I think you're on a good point there. I think it takes both of us, them and us, to do that. So are we at the point where we need to take some action as far as get, getting some company to some outside consultants, or is there anybody that disagrees that we don't need outside consultants? I don't see a problem with uh, somebody taking a holistic approach that's actually in the business to give us an overall plan for the city and actually identifying the different areas and kind of give us multiple plans. I think rehabilitation of our areas right now is kind of a priority in those because we have these not quite blight, but they will be here and be there in a few years because people are moving out and then they're going to be replaced by what kind of businesses? The businesses that they're going to be replaced by are the ones that are going to cater to the local population. That's why we have businesses moving out and going to where their customers are. 
Yes, we'll have destination places, and along the corridor, I see uh, some great possibilities of restaurants and stuff there where people will come up five miles or whatever to to enjoy. That's great, but the rest of the town has these little what do you call them? Call them neighborhood areas, power areas, and those are you know those have changed in the 25 years I've lived in Louisville. I've seen them change store by store. Why they leave because their clientele well, didn't live in Lewis anymore. Why their clientele moved? Well, it wasn't just to get a new house. They wanted their kids to go to a certain school, or they didn't like the way the neighborhood was turning out. Whatever their reasons are, there are a lot of people that have moved out in the last two, three years that I know personally, and a lot. I'm talking about 30 families. So your answer to my question is that was. <laughs> well, I, heard, I heard yes. I heard yes. I think that was a yes. I, I, I think my only my only would want to make sure that they were able to also we could leverage some of the funding maybe out of the, the, the 2025 plan. Um, and of course, we have these great you know we have the, the, the old town master plan. We have the TOD. So they make sure they get right. Yeah, we have tons of what we'd like to see. Uh, I'd like the, if, if yes, there needs to be some fact checking to make sure that. We can get there from here, um, but also the to, to align with that, if, if at all possible. Not we we focused before on downtown MacArthur at 3040, 1171 in Valley. There's some existing stuff out right. there that has been representative of council priorities in the past that we use to value them. So I hate to see that effort just part of the Street Valley, 1171 in Valley? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of just a high yeah. school. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of a focus there. The shopping center. Yeah, those up here. We all want to just provide them as lunch. I'd like to think the difference though that we're hearing is it sounds like in the past councils, and I'm not saying yes, but it seems like councils have directed studies where they thought things needed to happen. And what I'd like to hear from is somebody telling us. This is where your opportunities are. You have all these different scattered places, and but you ask the work team like the history here. Yeah, that, it, it wasn't said go fix this. To me. It was everything. It's just that everything at one point was the mall and a few shopping centers. So that is it. So it, you know the, the ones that were said when Albertsons moves out and they're going to move out at Valley Parkway across from Los Angeles yeah. because the store is shut down. The the whole place is going. Down the, the grocery chain. Uh, is anybody can come in there down the street from Walmart? Not the way it was. It'll be something different. It might be a Sprouts or something like that that might work there. But is there another Albertsons chain out chain out there that's going to come in there? Probably not. That's what we need to be told. I think the value in having the experts tell you where resources are best allocated is that they're needed. Because it's a two-way street, you know, what businesses would look at that uh, real estate and say, you know, I'd like to be there, that fits my development model, that fits my future plans, you know, and that's where it helps to have somebody come in and say, what, what's your inventory, and then who would be interested in that inventory? Yeah, the market. Is anything else out there? It's kind of like the old Orchard uh, Shopping Center over there. Walmart used to be there, and then it went to, what was there after Walmart? Piggly Wiggly, yeah. right? Well, Piggly Wiggly was for it. Someone was there before it burned. Same, uh, same I went to a fire there. Coco was there. And, same. and then, then it came back and saved. And then it went empty. You know, and that, that place cleared out, and now it's starting to grow a little bit with different stores. I think that's what's going to happen to the Albertson Shopping Center is that history. If we can avoid that, that'd be great. Yeah, but who would have guessed the furniture store would move into, you know, the old. Cheap. <laughs> we have that furniture store right there at 121 and 35. That's always going out of business for the last four years. <laughs> <laughs>
Council, we need to move on to another agenda item. I think it's something you continue to roll over and figure out the rest of the retreat. And uh, tomorrow, when we get to direction setting, you can maybe give us some feels to where you might want to go with it. Or, uh, if not tomorrow, then uh, certainly follow up on this through regular workshops or regular meetings. So uh, it's all right, y'all. I don't mind. Yeah, unless you have any other questions for Jason or John. I think it'd be good, like I said, to think about this and tomorrow. We want to get back to what you were asking is basically if you want to give direction to staff at that time to go out from RFP or something to a piece of direction staff at that time and they can put something together. Okay. You got something else, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good luck. Sure. Appreciate the presentation. Okay. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Thank you for being good. Thanks for your time. Thank you guys. Have a good retreat. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, folks. You bet. You got our contact information. I'm John. No worries. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. You guys have our contact sheet. A question, comment, email. Okay. Thank you. Okay.